Hi there, good morning. I'm uh, Constable Mark Reist. It's M A R K R E A S T. Um, I work with the Calgary Police Service Missing Persons Team. Um, we're, we're asking for the public's appear help again. Um, so we're once again asking for the public's help to find a man who's been missing since March. Uh, Jordan Boucher, he left Salmon Arm, BC sometime in November 2020 and arrived in Calgary on Saturday, November the 28th, 2020. Um, he was seen at the First Alliance Church on Saturday, February the 20th, and then we have a last sighting of him at the Flying J truck stop um, on the evening of Friday, March the 5th. When Jordan came to Calgary, he was driving a white four-door 2020 Volkswagen Jetta GTI with BC plates, KR249R. The vehicle had a wolf sticker on the back bumper. We asked the public for help uh, to locate the car and it was found in May in the Walmart parking lot near the intersection of Heritage Drive and Blackfoot Trail Southeast. Despite finding his vehicle, Jordan has still not been located and we are con very concerned for his welfare. Um, Jordan, he is in his late twenties, six foot two tall, slim build with brown eyes and brown hair. Uh, we're asking anyone with any information on Jordan's disappearance or his movements um, any time after March the 5th to call us at 403-266-1234. Um, tips can also be submitted anonymously to Crime Stoppers. Um, th this case is going to be solved by the public. Uh, we've pretty much exhausted all our investigative inquiries and we're really turning it over to the public. We're, we're needing the tips. We need that golden nugget, that bit of information to help us try and find Jordan. Um, I'm now going to turn you over to Jordan's mother, Roxana, um, which is R-O-X-A-N-A, -A, and it's, is it Osaurus? Osaurus. Osaurus. O-S-O-R-O-E-S. Um, she'd like to make a quick statement, and um, after that, we'll, we'll answer any questions anyone's got. Hi. Hello. My name is Roxana. I'm Jordan's mother. My son has been missing since end of January. I haven't heard from him. I'm trying to reach you. And I'm trying to reach you and the rest of the public to help me find him. He's very motivated and kind-hearted young man. Um, he's always looking. He has so much dreams and, uh, and keep going and looking for any ways to find or reach his goals. If anyone has some, any information, please call the police. And Jordan, if you're up there somewhere and you came across and see this, Please reach us. We all miss you. We all are here and we're going through the bad and hard times. Like you always say, there is a way out there that we can, all, we can make it and we'll find that way with you. So please reach us and to the public, please, if you have anything, any idea of whereabouts, please give it, a, give it a call to the police and help me to find my son. Thank you. Hi, Roxana. Um, can you just describe to us a little bit about how has this past months, we can only imagine, but been for you? It's been incredible hard. I tried to stay positive. There is a way that he wanted to reach some goal on finding a job. He landed in Calgary to make sure that, you know, there was a step ahead that he was taking by his own choice. And uh, he did... Um, try his best to to find uh, a way to find um, be mo kept motivated by faith to find a job but the, since the pandemic started it kind of stopped and delayed all his any of the, his resources to make this come true and did was he ever in trouble with anything before or where no. was he at in his life he was just uh, has chosen another place uh, where he can start and uh, start and doing things by his own. What kind of guy is he? Can you describe to him? He is a very kind, uh, kind uh, young man. And he's always helping and trying to help and make sure that his mother was OK and there was no need uh, for anything. Uh, that his mother was going to be, um, a, he wanted to do all this by himself, and he w he was great young man. He was incredible, very um, respectful, kind, and always um, trying to 
to make sure that everything was done properly and everything he covered every single spot a spot that he was able to to finish I'm um, really um, thing sorry about it I couldn't uh, you're doing just fine Roxanne you just keep you're going. Do, yeah, yeah you're doing uh, absolutely we're just trying to l learn a little bit more sort of about him and and I, I can imagine for you as his mom <laughs> to yes, live what every day must be like for you Yes, um, but keeping positive, and I know he's uh, very savage. Like he he has gone through the army for three years. That's always like he's always uh, find a way to make it through. And he was even surprised his body. He's uh, a, he saw himself. He was able to hold on through the pandemic to be a, being able to go through this stage so he can meet his uh, needs and what he wanted to do uh, following to get to his dream. He wanted to open a company, a tracking company. And he actually, through this pandemic, he was reaching out to uh, track companies and also to um, uh, ways that he can open and uh, he was setting a goal for in a couple within a couple of years that he can actually uh, open up a company and being able to do this by his own and did he grow up in bc no he grew up in ontario with his mother and father and uh, when he finished high school he decided to join the army in canada in ontario in Ontario, and then he moved to BC. He chose between Ontario and BC, and he actually decided to to stay in BC and um, and follow his dreams, which is the tracking company and having open up a business. So he needed to get his um, he, all his cards, all his avenues to be able to make it through. So he did work in the oil rig for a while. And then he come out and 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 try different, get all his certification, all his uh, I, uh, IDs, or everything that he needed. So within a couple of years, his goal was to buy a house and to be able to uh, be financially okay and going through his dreams, which is opening a company, one of his dreams, and joining back to the army too. He's always very kind, always looking into helping other and offering and you know uh, offering whatever is needed that anybody was in, in need in any kind of need. He was always very helpful, which the surroundings will what uh, anybody that is around him that he needed any kind of type of help. What's your biggest fear? That uh, I feel that he has uh, give up in whatever he has to come. He knows that there is a tunnel, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but he just letting it be whatever is happening right now. It's like a temporary moment, which is a cloudy moment for him, but he is waiting for that. I'm just very scared that how much has to uh, take this uh, mentally and uh, um, and um, inside of him emotionally and, f and um, that he's able to handle it and is not able to, to, to give up forever, which I, I think he's holding on. And, but I need your help to be able to reach and find him. It's, uh, it's the town, it's so big and so many places that he can be holding on and um, holding on and being standing in there somewhere that, until this pandemic goes through. That's why he's actually, his, uh, his next goal was, uh, he wanted to wait until this gets, uh, gets over, it finished, so that way he, he's able to, to get back into what he wanted to do. Perfect, thank you. Any more questions, Jane? So, so you think that he, do you think that he's just, um, maybe in the wrong spot, or do you have any idea maybe of, of what happened to him? And no idea of what happened to him. There is no communication. We, I don't have any communication with him whatsoever. None of my family. We all miss him, but the, he's, he's out there. Something's telling me as a mother, he's out there somewhere and waiting for this uh, pandemic to go through so he's able to keep up and uh, to keep keep up with his goal but mentally and physically uh, i'm very uh, worried about his worth of uh, of how 
how good and how uh, how how he's handling everything. I need to know. I I would like to find out. I need to find out where he's about this. So I'm really reaching out to you to find where if we can all uh, have a look or see a little bit of uh, you know around us. If you came across and see him, please let us know. So we're able to take it from there. And your hope is still very much alive. I can hear that in your voice. Yes. Something is telling me he's still alive, but I'm not sure how much of himself is uh, it's left standing mentally and physically, like I said, to be able to make it through, through this uh, time out there. Did he struggle with mental illness ever? No. Hey, any any further questions? Corwin, just one last thing. Sorry, there was no um, history of any um, any criminal history at all. Yeah, let's uh, let's have Constable Reese answer that. Absolutely, there's there's no criminal history at all with Jordan. Um, he's very much he's a young man. Uh, speaking to Roxana, he's incredibly determined. Um, he's tried to better himself, so he's come to Calgary. He doesn't know the city at all. So he, he's come to Calgary um, and, and he's, I don't know, we're operating very much on the belief that he is still alive um, until we get evidence to the contrary, um, saying there's no criminal history with him at all. Um, uh, and yeah, he, he's come to the city. He, he doesn't know the city, he has no resources in the city and stuff, which is why we're so concerned uh, about his welfare and his well-being. And it's very much a case of if, if he reaches out um, to us, if he doesn't want any involvement with the police, if he doesn't want any involvement with his family, that's fine. That's a decision for Jordan. Um, but we just need to check on him to make sure he is fine and well. But we do believe he's very much alive. And sorry, I see Dave has a question. Sorry, I missed your hand there. Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm just wondering for Constable Reist, uh, when you guys located his vehicle, were you able to sort of gain any information or insight into the situation from that? No, so we canvassed the area um, where the vehicle was for uh, obviously video surveillance and stuff. Unfortunately, it's parked away from any camera coverage. Um, we've p pursued a number of, of investigative avenues with the vehicle. However, they've all been negative. So we've got no idea when Jordan parked the vehicle at that location or, or what happened following that. Do you know that he parked it there or? or uh, again, as I was saying, we, we've we've been unable to trace any video surveillance or stuff. So um, it is it's we, we don't know who's parked the vehicle there, but we do believe Jordan did park that vehicle at that location. Okay, I see Rodana has a question. Hi, um, this is probably for Roxanne. I'm just wondering if Jordan has ever gone um, MIA like this before, where he's cut off contact with his family? Is it unusual for him to not speak with his family and especially for this long? Uh, I don't think this was premeditated. Like he went and drove uh, to Calgary and he was between Calgary and Ontario to see where he was gonna continue his journey. And he decided to go to Calgary and and to look for a job in there to open the doors to see uh, if he would start. The only problem is he didn't took any any help during the time of the pandemic. And like we all knew the pandemic, we didn't know if it was gonna last a week or it was gonna last like it did this time. So this kept uh, going and took a toll on him on, on how long it's been that people were hiring people, you know. Uh, so it kind of got against so what his uh, plans were. And uh, and it's so much that uh, he was able to hold on, to be able to cover and continue, uh, you know, committing with you know all his uh, staff and payments and all that. So this kind of brought him into into this position, and that's when he made the decision on, I guess, on continuing in food by food, I think, and uh, left the car in there, and uh, and from there we haven't heard it since the phone is being uh, disconnected. I haven't heard any, and by, by within that time, we were in contact every day, 
every day we had uh, for some reason whatever we were eating or he was eating he was actually leaving but he didn't want any help he really wanted to do it by himself and, uh, and there was no way that we could change that in his mind and I tried so many resources and so many ways that I uh, we were all trying to help through this uh, stage and uh, once the pandemic that we understood but he really was determined on it's something it was going to come and and very soon and he had faith um he was very positive on this is a, a short transition that he was going to be able to go through um and reach where he wanted to go okay, where was so he when staying and um what what did you talk about the last time that you talked to him the last time that we talked to him, it's he met my other son actually, and that he was coming to Ontario, and um, and I was telling him, okay, how did it go and everything, how you guys stayed, they share a hotel together, and um, and then he, I thought he, he was gonna convince him to come alone, and uh, and wait until this pandemic is, uh, goes uh, stops, and then he will get back, and that way he can visit his mother and spend some time like he always wanted, because he said soon after I find a job and that, and I'm set it and I find my apartment, then I'm gonna be uh, rich, uh, coming back and seeing your mom. So he had program and plans already in set, but this was very determined and this was his thing. So I tried to keep in 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 touch with him and just being beside while he was going through his stages in life, like any mother, I assume, will be and trying to do her best as, you know, sharing things with his son. And uh, he's always very trying and saying, you know, Ma, you always find a way. And, and I try to give them that. Don't give up and keep going. There is always something will come up. So I'm pretty sure he has that uh, in his mind and he's focused on and determined on, on, on finding a way to go through and to the, through this. But I'm very, very worried about where he's about and where he is in this long and missing him dearly. And I can't go one. I stay up at night and I keep waking up since four to five o'clock in the morning. That's my Jordan. It wakes me up at night time and thinking that I'm in a roof and my son is out there somewhere. I It's hard to understand for a mother a way how this can happen when you are he's has a very loving we don't have nothing that he has separated us and we actually were being so close together after he turned he come out of the army and and out of the sudden not to hear from him not to know anything from him it just really uh it takes a toll on on your beliefs and things but as i am i'm very positive he is hanging in there and aside what he's able to do he's doing as much possible to keep going and and doing what he wanted to do which is going through and waiting until he's able to get back in his feet i but i need to hear from him i need to reach out to him i know he's out there somewhere and other than that, I don't know um, what, what else is there. So I need please to, to contact the police if you have any idea or anything that ha that it looks like him, that it's him, that you can see him. He's very, he keeps it for himself and he's very uh, a quiet person. So he's gonna be out there. He's probably uh, out there somewhere and, and trying to figure it out and doing it in his own, more than in a group of people. So please, I ask again, if with your help, I think I can find my son somewhere in this city. <sighs> Thank you. And, uh, Jamie, was your hand up for another question? Roxanne, no, just what, what do you want your son to know if he was listening to you today? I would like to tell him that there is, I miss you so much. I miss you and you know it. And I know that you're trying to do and not to reach me to try to do it by yourself. But there is a time that we all need a hand to hold on and to keep going. We're in this together. I brought you to this world. I know you can do it and you have the faith that you can do it. But it's so much that sometimes you need to take this little bit of transition 
and be somewhere that you can get some your close family or somewhere that you can have a roof instead of being out there with so much danger anything can happen you can do it jordan you can make it through this but please reach out to your mom or reach out to somebody please we already talked about it reach to us we can keep well, you can go through that you're gonna make it and i know i believe you will make it son I think we're going to end it there for today. Thank you, everybody, for, for attending.